This is the SEO Mindset Podcast with your hosts, Sarah McDowell and Tasmin Sullivan. This podcast is for SEO professionals and each week with the help of our wonderful guests, we discuss the important stuff that actually affects our careers and progression, but sadly often doesn't get talked about. You know, the invaluable soft and interpersonal skills that are often taken for granted, such as the skills we need for listening, time management, communication, and more. We also talk about the big issues that affect us and our careers, such as burnout, imposter syndrome, self-belief, saying no, plus other big issues and obstacles. With this podcast, we want to share knowledge on topics that unlock our listeners' true potential and enhance not only their careers, but all parts of their lives. So are you ready to prioritize your own personal growth and career development? Then let's crack on with this week's episode. Hello friends and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the SEO Mindset Podcast where your hosts are myself, Sarah McDowell and the ever so wonderful Tasman Sullivan where new episodes go out every Thursday. This week I have a bit of a treat for you because I'm joined by a fabulous guest. I am joined by Inga Bubez and we're talking all about how you can positively challenge challenge yourself. We talk about benefits of doing this, the difference between negatively challenging yourself and positively challenging yourself, do's and don'ts, and inspired by the one and only Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, we also talk about our alter egos. It's a fabulous episode and I can't wait for you all to listen. Now, before we crack on with the episode, who is Inga? As the Director of Enterprise Marketing at STAT, powered by Moz, Inga leads their strategic efforts in demand generation and lead conversion, customer retention and development and brand awareness. She has been recognized as the most valuable boss and she brings over two decades of rich tech industry experience, leading with empathy and a deep commitment to team success. Her journey is impressive and spans dynamic startups to global tech giants, where she's significantly contributed in various marketing roles, blending technical acumen with business insights. And one more thing, if you like the podcast, if you like what me and Tasmin are doing, there are different ways that you can support us. For example, why not give us a cheeky donation? We are set up on Buy Me A Coffee. If you fancy doing that, link is in our show notes and we'd be ever so grateful. Another thing that you can do is share our podcast and episode. So help us get the word out there. Share this podcast with anyone and everyone. Next time you're listening to an episode and you think, I don't know, Sharon, I, it's always Sharon. Sharon always comes to my mind, but Sharon would love this episode. Why not share it with them? Share the love. And if you're feeling extra generous, why not give us a five-star review on whatever podcast playing platform you are using? We only want those five-star reviews though. Joking aside, right. That's enough with that admin. Let's crack on with this week's episode. And a very warm welcome to Inga. How are we doing? Hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me here. This is such a pleasure. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And I want you to paint me a picture because um, you're in Vancouver, right? In uh in Canada. Vancouver, yes, Vancouver, British Columbia. And today it is a sunny day. It is usually called Raincouver for a reason, but today it's bright and sunshine. Obviously, they knew that you were going to be recording on the SEO Mindset podcast. So they were like, well, giving her some sunshine. That's what she needs right now. Well, I think they knew that you were going to be on this podcast and interviewing me. So we might as well give it some sunshine. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Vancouver is on my list I've been to Toronto so I've been to that side of Canada but yeah I need to come back and explore the other side because I'm always told that Vancouver is a beautiful place so yes we would welcome you here anytime you're gonna regret saying that I'll end up moving not at all I am going to be your professional tour guide for the day or for two days 
depending on how long you're here definitely I, I'll hold you to that I'll hold you to that yeah. so the topic of today's episode is all about positively challenging yourself because that is a great way that we can push ourselves and we can grow. So I want to start off with the basics. So Inga, what does this mean to you? So what does positively challenging yourself mean to you? Oh gosh, you know, that is such a deep-rooted question and it's very rich in the way that I could answer that. But for me personally, it's about facing your insecurities, um, embracing feeling uncomfortable, feeling like you don't know it all and you're not the smartest person in the room and knowing that that is actually a great thing. You see, for me, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I don't want to feel like I know everything because it doesn't mean that means that I am not growing. So positively challenging yourself is putting myself, putting yourself out there in a place where you feel slightly uncomfortable, a lot uncomfortable and being able to live with that and learn from that and grow from the people around you and sometimes even taking a back seat and letting others talk so that you could listen. I think that's what it means for me oh you've you've already started with so much that I want to like unpick here but let's do it <laughs> but I totally agree like you'd never want to be the smartest person in the room because as much as that might be an ego beat boost and your safety net like you say like if there's no one there that you're surrounding yourself by that is helping you to grow you're only going to stunt how much you're going to grow yourself Correct. Correct. And for me, you know, I'm going to just say this unfiltered. It gets boring. You know what I mean? Like as much as I'd like to contribute, I'd like to be contributed to selfishly speaking. So in a way, when I'm in a room of people who are really smart, brilliant, intelligent, funny, you know, and they have a lot to offer, I I, I do sometimes feel like Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm small, you know, but that's a good thing. And that's what I've learned to embrace. And going to your point about feeling uncomfortable, that sort of lends itself to imposter syndrome, which is a big subject in itself. And something that I've been told is if you ever feel like you have imposter syndrome, if you ever feel uncomfortable, lean into it because that means that you are pushing yourself. And it's scary, but I suppose the more times that you do something that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit nervous you'll only get used to it and you'll end up liking the feeling I don't know what would you say oh my gosh you touched on a very good point I mean I really feared public speaking for the longest time of you know as a woman and maybe I'm speaking about myself I always find things that's wrong you know oh my hair's not in place or I don't sound good. You know, there's always that dissonance between what people hear, how people hear you and how you hear yourself. I've always hated myself being recorded, for example. Um, but yes, absolutely. And the way I get over that is, is eventually I push myself to doing things that actually require those elements. So for example, I've taken up, I've taken up competitive sports. Um, I, I think I'm an introvert at heart. But when I have to do, um, you know, when I have to perform um, spar and kickboxing, I've taken up, um, gosh, singing and dancing. And, and when I've had to perform and get on stage, it really made me uncomfortable. But somehow that adrenaline feed fed, fed me and it made me become the person that I thought I wasn't. And then that's just another facet of me and I've really come to embrace that so that imposter syndrome that you talk about definitely resonates to me because I used to feel and I still feel like I'm not good enough for this or I'm not cut up for that well that's just not really me but what if it is you know what I'm saying so I think you just have to just challenge yourself and get to places where you know all right that's going to make me feel uncomfortable and come out on the other hand potentially feeling like wow that's me that's another facet of me and that's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's about your mindset and having that shift, isn't it? So rather than thinking, what if I'm rubbish? What if I don't like it? Why are you not thinking, what if I love it? 
And what if I'm awesome at it? And it's just that shift in mindset. And it's, I get that it's easier said than done, but the more that you do this, the more that you try new things, the more that you see what you do like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're, what you're not so good at, you get to know who you are as a person and what fires you and what you want to do more of. So I, I want to just understand then. So positively challenging yourself I'm all for it you sold it to me Inga well done your uh, <laughs> your pitch has worked I'm there oh, my pleasure <laughs> how does it differ from negatively challenging yourself well I feel like you know we all set up goals and we we often you know find this courage to get out there and do what we need to do but sometimes I think what differentiates from positively challenging yourself and negatively challenging yourself is setting up unrealistic expectations. So for example, you know, if I'm just going to take up running, right, it would be unrealistic for me to set up a goal to run, I don't know, a 10 mile marathon in one day before training, before warming up, before actually getting there and building myself to get there. And then of course, you know, most likely I would fail. And so with that failure, I might actually, as a human, I might actually think to myself, I'm not cut out for this or I'm not good for this. And and then that's it. You know, you have that mindset now where you've proven to yourself that, oh, that challenge is not for me and I'm not up for it. But really, that's a flaw because you have just negatively challenged yourself. You're not giving yourself time to get up there and work towards it. You know, it's almost like proving yourself that you're not worthy of that challenge and you can't make it there and I think that that's something that we really have to be mindful of to just not over aim at the very first Mm. try you have to work up to it you don't want to set yourself up for fail at the end of the day do you of course and and you know the thing is we often have role models and we try to channel those people at least that's how I do it you know when I When I sing, I would channel Adele or Christina Aguilera. And then I expect myself to sound like them. Well, no, (laughs) that's never going to happen, I think. So, you know, it's just just making sure that you have um, the baby steps to get there and you take your time and be patient with with yourself. Awesome. I'm so tempted Mm -hmm. to ask you to sing your next answer. (laughs) You know, if you... (laughs) If you invite me to the second one, I might give you a two-second number. How's that? <laughs> oh, all I'm saying is me and Tasmin may need a new jingle for the podcast. Oh, absolutely. Maybe yeah, we let's... need to talk. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> but I fear that I'm derailing us. Mm-hmm. I'm derailing the conversation. So you've already given an example of mm-hmm. um, negatively challenging yourself with the running. What I'd like to hear from you is, would you be open to share in time or experience in your career where you have challenged yourself like what happened what did you do and what did you get out of it this is going to be a very tricky question because I'm going to let my vulnerable self out and um, yeah it's 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 very relatable to work so for example when I joined Moss um, for the stat division for the enterprise you know um, business unit as a marketer of course the space is very familiar to me. It's very near and, and very very near and dear to my heart. Um, but do I know everything about the space? Do I know the people, the influencers? Not at all. I mean, I was always a consumer, never on the other end. So for me, it was a little bit, um, I'm going to be vulnerable here. It was a little bit intimidating. And I had to push myself to get out there and and be okay to look and sound a bit stupid, you know, just to use that word de- deliberately. Um, I definitely, I definitely feel that it was, it was a bit of a balance between positively and challenging myself and, and our team to get up to the place where I would want us to be together as a team, to show up together as a, an enterprise marketing team. Um, I had to first onboard and learn the product and the space. Um, I had to learn the team. I had to understand the personalities. So that was interesting, rewarding, and sometimes challenging in itself. So it was it was about pacing ourselves. It was about pacing oneself. You know, um, once I got that out of the way and we executed on programs, it was also about you know 
setting level setting expectations with myself, with the team, with what we have as resources. You know, can we get to an A plus quality on the first go, on the first webinar, on the first podcast, right? Probably not. And and we didn't, but we are getting closer and closer and closer to it as we go and as we learn and as we bond together as a team. So I can't stress to you enough that um, had we gone completely, you know, overboard and and been ambitious to the point where we would be so, gosh, um, so stunted at the beginning, I think that would have been a negative challenge to us. So I, I, I guess the fact that we took it step by step, it was a good progression towards positively challenging ourselves. Thank you for being so vulnerable and open and honest there, Inga. Like, it's so great that, yeah, like, these conversations are awesome when guests open up and they they share actual experiences and how they found stuff. So thank you for doing that and feeling comfortable enough to do that. And that's what you've just said is going to be so valuable to our listeners. And it's an iterative process, right? Once you get there, yeah. when, once you feel comfortable there, I mean, you have to you have no choice but to start again. I mean, the world of SEO, the world of Google with AI coming into play, it's such a dynamic, adaptive environment that you really have to move with it so you know perhaps last week I might feel really secure and confident about things this week not so much anymore and that's okay that's actually good that you feel that way you, you don't ever want to stay stagnant and and feel ignorant about things and I suppose another thing to remember is just because someone else so there might be others that you're looking to in the industry or others in the company or others above you that you aspire to or you look up to and you might think damn they've got their I really want to swear here they've got their s together um they must never get these feelings of nervousness or imposter syndrome or anything like that but always remember that everyone is having these same emotions just because someone looks so together so controlled and like they're killing it basically you don't know what goes behind the scenes do you Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm going to quote, I think it was Beyonce. I'm sorry, I'm using a pop culture reference. <laughs> I'm going to start singing. I'm loving all of your pop Yeah, yeah exactly. No, I, I, I love Queen B. I mean, she said, she said, I think in one of her interviews, um, I channel Sasha Fierce in one of her previous albums because she herself, apparently, um, uh, as a person, she's quite shy and she's quite introverted, yet when she goes there, when she goes out there on stage, she channels another character and she becomes her. And that's how she shows up in that instant. And that is her authentic self to bring back to your Brighton podcast, but it's just another facet of you that now you're able to get into. And absolutely. And I I constantly do that on a day-to-day basis. I mean, you have no idea how many times I channel you, Sarah, and Tasmin, you know, and and just how I... I'm able to manage the the stresses and the stressors and the and the challenges that come day to day. I mean, you've you've done a lot for me in you know in my mindset, <laughs> SEO mindset. It is that is so heartwarming to hear. But all I'm thinking, Inga, is my alter ego. So in the SEO world, who would my alter ego be? And I mean, what are your thoughts here? If I said it, you're going to have to trademark it, correct? <laughs> Um, well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a black swan without the evil double, double ganger. <laughs> and the reason, hear me out, the reason why I say this is because just as a swan is, you know, they're very graceful, they're very beautiful, and they are, they're very adaptable, but beneath the surface, they're busy, you know, their feet just keep on paddling away. And they're always um, they're they're always doing stuff, and it's it's just I feel like that's you without any preparation. I I thought <laughs> my unfiltered thought goes there for better or worse. Is that okay to say? I'm gonna take <laughs> I'm gonna take that. So I look graceful like a swan on top, but not but a white a swan. I see you as a black swan, meaning like you're different, and you know there's that gem, and 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 I. I I am able to relate to you and connect to you from a professional and personal level. And you know, there's a lot of people who's one or the other, not a lot of people who are both. And I wanted to just convey to you that you're both. 
I appreciate that. And that's going to be my next tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl, let's do that. <laughs> I love that. Right, what we're going to uh, do. Oh, no, go. Were you going to say oh, I something? I was going to say I, I, uh, I have tattoos myself, so I can totally relate on the, um, on the inspirations that I draw to create those things, yes. They're very addictive. Right, mm-hmm. Inga, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. We're going to give chance to our listeners for them to think about what their alter ego names are going to be or their alter egos. And yeah, we'll come back with part two where I'm going to ask you for advice to those who want to challenge themselves. So come back, folks, because Inga's going to tell us lots of great advice easy to implement strategies so come back perfect hi sarah here from the seo mindset just a quick reminder that if you do enjoy the podcast and what me and tasman are doing you can support by donating as little as five pound to us via our buy me a coffee page just head on over to the seomindset.co.uk forward slash donate There will be a link to that page in this episode's show notes. And also, we'd love it if you shared our podcast with others. The more listeners we get, we can continue to find awesome guests to join us for episodes and talk about important topics. So, the next time you are listening to an episode and think someone would enjoy, tell them. Open up the episode in your app, find the share button, and you will be able to copy the link to the episode and send it to them via WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Slack. There's so many ways that you can help us spread the word. SEOs, have you heard about STAT? STAT? is a SERP tracking and analytics platform built for tackling large-scale SEO with accuracy and ease. Whether you're in-house or at an agency, juggling multiple sites, millions of pages, or just a ton of keywords, Stat tracks your search performance at scale without falling over. And since each Google SERP is a treasure trove of consumer research and made of more than just rankings, Stat is more than just a rank tracker. From SERP features to competitors, search volume to share a voice, you'll get everything the 100 results SERP has to offer, parsed, analyzed, and delivered right to your doorstep every single day. It's pretty much the ultimate SEO insights tool. And with Instant Insight, you can unlock new search opportunities, drive more visibility, and prove the value of the SEO work you do. Want to learn more about how you can succeed with STAT? Head on over to www.getstat.com or follow the link in the show notes. We are back for part two. And before we get into you, Inga, giving us some great advice and tips for those who want to challenge themselves, I did forget to ask you one thing. And that was, what is the main takeaway from part one, please? Main takeaway. Well, um, I truly believe that you really have to believe in yourself. Um, Whether you're doing it right or wrong, whether you feel that you're good at it or not or not yet believe in yourself you know really really know that if you believe in yourself and you exude that confidence people will believe in you and it always starts from you i think that's the takeaway and the second takeaway is you won't get it right the first time you know you might think okay well where's the balance of positively challenging myself and negatively challenging yourself the balance doesn't matter it's whatever you feel, whatever you try, you know, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, try again. And if you, if it really doesn't work, oh, well, you know, move on to the next and it's totally okay. It's all about the journey really is. And you'll quickly learn, you'll quickly learn when things aren't working and you'll know. It's like when you touch something hot, you touch it, you burn yourself and you're like, I'm definitely not going to do that again. Uh, so it's like that, isn't it, really? Like if you do Absolutely. something... Yeah. Yeah. And and don't compare yourself to others is another thing that I think is underrated. You know, you often compare yourself to your peers, to your friends, to your colleagues, um, to your mentors. Don't like don't do that. This is your life. This is your path. You have your own reasons 
for doing things or not doing things, you know. It's it's good, it's okay to look up to others and as I was saying before, you know, to channel others. But at the end of the day, you're your own person and that's who you have to believe in. Exactly. And it's your own journey and Correct. your yeah you don't want obviously you're going to take influence and you're going to look to others for maybe inspiration and and advice but only use that as a guide you are on your own journey you can say yes to things you can say no to things just because someone else has said yes to things doesn't mean that you have to like the more that you go on this journey of getting to know you the the better your career is going to be the better your personal growth is going to be Mm -hmm. so what I'd like to do now is get some advice practical advice for our listeners on how to challenge themselves and what I think would be good is if we do some like do's and don'ts do you think that's a good idea yeah yeah it's a it's a great idea um so best career advice run away as fast as you can (laughs) Sarah laugh with me I am I'm totally joking um (laughs) yes don't leave me hanging. Um, the do's in the, the career advice. Stay curious. Never stop learning. Don't be afraid of failures. It's a cliche, but what do they say? I mean, failures is the best teacher. It truly is. Um, especially in the world of SEO, you know, um, the, the forever changing Google SERP features, the, the ways in which we do things, the rank tracking and this and that, like it's always going to be evolving, right? Always stay curious, always try to learn, you know, um, today what you didn't learn yesterday and find out from people and don't be afraid to ask questions. I think when you do that, you further propel yourself and the team around you and the business and the community, you know, it's, it's I don't want to say the cliche, you make the world a better place, but you do, and that's something that I think is um, a big positive do out of out of a career advice. It's something that would benefit you, would benefit your community, and would benefit others. And never underestimate the value of a personal relationship. Um, sometimes people say, I guess this is another do. Sometimes people say, well, perhaps it's a conflict of interest, you know, to 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 build friendships and and um, a working relationships at the same time. For me, it's actually the opposite. If you, if you're fortunate enough to be working amongst the people that you can be friends with, that you can be friendly with, that you could develop that with, that becomes um, a virtuous cycle. You know, in the work environment, I got your back and you got mine, and together we are building this team and this business, and the goal becomes a lot more surmountable. You know, and 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 it becomes a um, it becomes, I know this is going to sound like another cliche, but it's, it, it becomes a family. And I really, mm-hmm. truly mean that. So the do in that is find your people, find your niche, find the area that you excel in, both at a professional level, but also at a personal level. You know, you want to be in an environment that would allow you, allow you to be you and exude that strength and, and use that strength for the betterment of your team. So I think that's a big do for me. Um, I don't have a lot of don'ts, to be honest, just because a lot of the don'ts, like I was saying before, you know, even if they're don'ts, even if in hindsight you you think, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have done it that way, it's still a good learning. So there's not really a lot of don'ts. I, I feel um, the one don't, just as I was saying earlier, don't compare yourself to others. You could look up to others. You could, um, you could emulate a, a, a path that you want to take in order to become or in order to gain the success that perhaps another person that you look up to has had but don't compare yourself to them right it's it's it becomes boring when you become another person anyways you want to be the you that you are as unique that as the unique person that you are um maybe another don't that i want to throw out there is you don't want to burn out (laughs) i think that's that's the one thing that I also have to keep mindful of. You know, listen to your body, listen to your mind. Um, if you need a break, if you need to rest, if you need to say, you know, I, I need to compartmentalize today and just not do a million things, allow yourself for that. I think that's really important because burnout is real and it could take a long time for you to recover from that. I think that's one thing that I need to impart. I feel like I'm a therapist now, Sarah. <laughs> you you being a very good therapist. 
maybe mm-hmm. maybe is that that should be your permanent role on the SEO mindset <laughs> You can yeah, be you know, yes, exactly. Let's chat. <laughs> um, so I want to pick out a couple of things that you've just said. So um, when you were on about finding your people, finding your tribe, because it's all about feeling safe and secure, because unless you feel safe and secure, you're not going to feel comfortable challenging yourself. You're not going to feel comfortable being vulnerable and trying new things. And I get that's easier said than done because in a work capacity, we kind of think, okay, we've got a certain, I don't know, like thing that we need to adhere to or look like we're achieving or doing. But there are there are going to be safe spaces out there. There are going to be times in your career where you feel com- where you feel vulnerable and you need that support from your team around you to be your cheerleader to pick you up or to give you advice right absolutely and the one thing actually um our new general manager Ethan had mentioned one time we are allowed to and we should be you know efficient and in doing in doing that we're scrappy but not sloppy and I I hold on to that you know scrappy but not sloppy and absolutely you uh you do things you do things uh, efficiently and you try out new things and in doing that you might actually be scrappy and you might make mistakes and you might have accidents and you might not succeed in in the program or in the campaign that you're doing but it's not because of deliberate sloppiness and i think that's important as, as well as much as you allow to you allow yourself to make the mistakes i believe also in holding yourself up to a standard that you believe is you. So for example, you know, you can be rest assured that when I make mistakes or when I fail at certain things, because inevitably we all do, I've tried my best. And I think that's really important. Wonderful. And just as you are talking, I've, I'm thinking about a couple of don'ts that I'd like to chuck in my I want to say my two pence worth, but it's probably two cent worth. <laughs> I will adapt. Let's use two pence. <laughs> two pence, two cents. Yes. Um, but two things that I want to add in is don't be afraid to change path. So just because you have set this path or you've planned a certain path that you want to take and it's good to have a goal, what you want to be able to do is have some flexibility, be able to change because as you're trying out things, you might not want to do something or you might want to do more of something else. So make sure that you have the flexibility in a plan to change. And also a don't would be don't leave it too long to stop doing something that you don't like. So we're talking about challenging yourself and you might think, oh, I need to, I need to leave this longer. I need to push harder. I need to, the reason I'm not liking this is because I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Something that I'm getting more, well, I'm getting better at slowly but surely is relying on my gut feelings because if my gut is telling me something, that is sort of your survival mode, isn't it? So if your gut is sort of saying, Sarah, this isn't for you, don't push it, don't hang on and hoping it will, like that's where you're going to lead to burnout. That's when you're going to lead to like, yeah, not really enjoying it. Yeah. So those are the two don'ts that I would like to just add. Oh, absolutely. I echo that. Good for you for bringing that up. (laughs) <laughs> wonderful I'm very sorry but we are rapidly running out of time but I'm just Aww. enjoying my time with you so <laughs> um I would like this might be a bit hard it's going to be a big task because we've covered quite a lot in this episode if you were to summarize just one main takeaway so everything that we've spoken about everything that we've gone through today the one key takeaway that you want people to implement do learn what would that be gosh this is a million dollar question um i would say that the main takeaway is believing in yourself and utilizing that as your biggest strength because that will carry you far 
um, no matter what space we're in, whether it's SEO or no matter what our roles are. I mean, we're we're talking about SEOs here, but for me, you know, at the end of the day, we're all people, we're all humans. So if we can connect with people at that level, you know, whether in our messaging, in our working relationship, um, and whether we're talking to customers, partners, colleagues, you will get yourself far and your team. And it, it, it kind of a, it proliferates, you know. Um, I think that's my main, to, my main takeaway is to be succinct about it. It's just remember that you are a human being. You have your strengths and your weaknesses and so do others. So let's relate to each other as that first and foremost. And be scrappy. Be scrappy, not floppy. <laughs> That's my main takeaway. I love that. I feel like I could trademark some things, although some of these things are not my quote. So I, I will I will give credit where it's due. Um we always ask we always ask our guests to recommend to follow someone in the industry for doing awesome things. Who would that person be or people? Oh, I have so many. Um just from my own personal professional experience. At Moz, I would say the influencers for sure. Um, I've learned a lot just from following their tweets and their LinkedIn, like Lily Ray, Ross Simmons, and our own subject matter experts in-house, Tom Kaffer, Dr. Pete, um, as well as our leaders, uh, you know, our SVP, Willow, and um, our GM, Ethan, our my, my own team members, you know, our content manager and everybody else who's helped me get this far and who's helped all of us get this far, providing the content and assets. Um, gosh, the, the list, the list is endless. And of course, you and Tasman. I mean, you both have been very insightful, like I said, from a, from a professional, but also from a personal level. And we must never forget the personal side because that's what carries us through, right? That's what gets up gets us up, gets me up in the morning to want to do the work that I do with the people. So it's an underrated thing. Yeah. And Inga, I just, I feel very bashful that you've mentioned me and Tasman. So appreciate you. Thank you. Oh and, gosh, uh, <laughs> this is, this is me blushing now. <laughs> yes, I can tell. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Right. I'm very sorry, but that is that is it. That is this week's episode. So thank you very much to our special guest, Inga, for joining us, being so vulnerable, so open and having such a wonderful conversation. Thank you to you, our listeners, for tuning in for another episode. Reminder about how you can support me and Tasmin. You can give us a one-off donation on Buy Me A Coffee. There's a link in the show notes if you fancy doing that. And please do share our episodes and podcasts with others. If you're feeling extra generous, why not leave us a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast playing platform that you are using. Okay, Inga, shall we say goodbye until next time? Yes, and I want to make sure that they also have my contact info should anybody want to reach me directly as well. Um, Sarah, yes. how would we for that so what I will make what I always do is I put our guests information social media handles websites in the show notes but okay. if there is a particular handle or a particular URL that you'd like to share go for it um no I think it's great I mean my email address um Sarah you you, you will share but it's basically my first name dot last name inga dot Bubez at moz.com. I'm with Stat Search Analytics, so we are the enterprise business unit of Moz. Uh, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, if they wanted to reach out to me, that they're able to, to do so, Sarah. So if you're going to be providing the information, then yeah, I'm happy. There you go. Yes, I, we always direct people to the show notes where they can follow up with all wonderful links to our guests and other useful resources. So yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful. Right, take care everyone. Hey SEOs, are you ready to strike more Eureka moments? Then you'll need the ultimate SEO insights tool, STAT. STAT delivers precision surf insights in any location on desktop and mobile every single day 
for keyword counts that start in the thousands. There's no more guessing who the competition is or how you measure up. Stat's powerful share of voice metrics and robust competitor tracking will keep you in the know and on top of the SERPs. With one-click CSV reports, handy APIs, and pre-built Looker Studio connectors, you can even take your SERP data to go to fuel deep analysis and ambitious experimentation. And that's just scratching the surface. Learn more about STAT at www.getstat.com or follow the link in the show notes.